Hey there, Victor family. Uh, it's a little bit windy out here today, so please bear with me in case you hear any wind noises like leaves rustling around or just the wind knocking me over and giving me a concussion. Anyway, I've got a question for you today. Have any of you ever experienced anxiety? Now, if you haven't, I want you to check your pulse because I fear something may be wrong with you. Now, of course, we all know that every one of us has experienced anxiety at some level. And some of us have experienced it to a degree that it has a significant effect on our lives. According to the National Alliance for Mental Illness, over 40 million adults suffer from anxiety disorders, meaning it prevents them from carrying out everyday activities. And our modern word anxiety derives from the old Latin angere, which literally means to choke or to squeeze. But we know excessive worry and fear is not a modern phenomenon. Jesus addressed it in his most famous sermon. That's right, the one on the mount. In Matthew, he tells the congregation during the Sermon on the Mount, therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Folks, please just indulge me here for a second and let me share with you the King James version of this verse. It goes like this. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now am I the only person who loves phrases like the morrow? That makes me feel very Shakespearean. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? But anyway, I hope you noticed that that verse begins with a very important word that we need to take account for. That's right, it begins with the word therefore. As my good friend Tom Caps likes to say, whenever you see the word therefore, you need to ask, what's that word therefore? If you don't know, Tom loves puns. He loves them. I mean, he, he really loves puns. Loves them. So when you see that word, we look back to see what preceded it. We need to look before the word therefore so we won't be confused anymore. I can take this no more. In this case, before he says, don't be anxious about tomorrow, we see that Jesus had already been telling the congregation not to worry about what they will eat or what they will drink or what clothing they will wear. And he gives them examples of the lilies of the field which don't toil or spin cloth, yet they were still dressed in more glory than Solomon. He points to the birds who don't plant or store crops, but still the Lord feeds them. And Jesus reminded them that they are worth more than the birds and the lilies of the field so they should have faith that God will provide even more so for them. Jesus insists that they should not be too concerned with things that will give them comfort and security. And I don't mean comfort and security like in the eternal sense that the grace of Christ provides. I just mean regular old earthly comfort and security, the kind that is impermanent and needs to be constantly reinforced. Then in the verse immediately before the therefore, Jesus gives them a very important command. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So right there, Jesus is saying, don't obsess over these trivial things that will not last, that you can't take with you. Your priority, it should be on seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And we need to follow Jesus's commands to love and to serve God with all our hearts and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And if we're rightly focused on those things, God will take care of the rest. That doesn't mean that you don't need to ever work or plan for anything. It just means you don't need to obsess and live in fear over things that are not essential for your main purpose in this life. And when we are focused, when we have our priorities straight and are focused on serving and loving God and, and our neighbor, we're not gonna have time to worry about the things that make us feel comfortable and secure in the moment. We'll be focusing on 
What can I do for God and my neighbor right now? We all need to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, how much time do I spend worrying about money or a house or a car, my physical health or my family's physical health, my appearance, a relationship, uh, what people think of me, how I come across on social media and on and on and on. And don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that none of those things are important. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't spend time ever thinking about them. What I'm saying is that, and what I believe Jesus is saying, is that keeping these earthly things in a state of perfection is not the reason for your life. And it's totally impossible anyway. So if you're carrying around worry about all these things constantly, you're going to be choked by them. You're going to be made anxious, a prisoner to fear. Jesus essentially says to be in the moment, live in the present for God. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And certainly folks, this is often easier said than done, I know. So how do we do it? First, you gotta start by confessing to God that you're overwhelmed with worries. You may be overwhelmed with sin. That often causes anxiety. And then you ask him to help, help with your sin or help with your priorities. Ask God to help you focus on loving and serving him and his children right now. Ask him to help you know that as long as you can do that, everything is fine because your mission is not to make sure that you'll always be safe and comfortable. It's not to make sure that you'll always be loved and approved by everyone. Your mission is to serve God. Ask him for these things and then look around. Look around you. Do you have any opportunities, no matter how small, right now to praise God? Do you have opportunities to serve him, to love him, to serve and love your neighbor? Then everything is okay. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. Live for God right now in the present. Remember, it's called the present because it's a gift. Oh, that's it, I'm out of here. Dear Lord, we love you so much and we thank you that you provide for us. Even though we doubt and we try to provide what we need for our own comfort and our own security, you know that what we really need is you and your grace and you've commanded us to serve you and to love you. And Lord, we ask you to help us to give up the worry, to free us from being choked by anxiety and fear for the things that we have no control over, Lord. Lord, we ask you, we give these things to you and we ask you to take control and to help us live now for you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Victor family. I hope you have a wonderful day. Folks, for your viewing pleasure, here are a few puns to give you some hope for the upcoming week. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Ah. You gotta be kidding me. Carrot. Tom says it's no fun without puns. That's right. Tom is very pro-pun. He's anti-pun control. <laughs>